One of my favorite memories as a child was when I was in seventh grade and my Rebbe in Yeshiva took our entire class on a trip to Madison Square Garden to watch the Harlem Globetrotters play a basketball game. Now everyone knows the Harlem Globetrotters are basketball play players who are athletes, but they also mix comedy and theater into their show. And I still remember the excitement of sitting in Madison Square Garden and watching the Harlem Globetrotters play. You may be wondering why a Rebbe and a Yeshiva would take his class to watch the Harlem Globetrotters. And there's actually a story behind it. The coach of the Harlem Globetrotters at the time, this was like in the early 80s, was a man by the name of Abe Sachs. Now Abe Sachs was obviously a Jewish man and he lived in Long Island. And one night he was watching cable TV and he saw a Hasidic <coughs> Fabrengen from 770 Eastern Parkway where the Rebbe was addressing thousands of Hasidim. And he was so inspired by the scene and the melodies and the teachings, which were in Yiddish, but also translated on the screen in English, that the next day he went to 770 Eastern Parkway. He took the train to go meet the Rebbe. He arrived there and he was greeted by the yeshiva boys. He looked different, obviously. He was wearing you know, a light suit and a, you know, a light-colored hat. And everyone else around him was dressed in black. And so everyone gathered around him. And he told him who he is and how he's seen the Rebbe's TV uh, cable for bringing. And he wants to meet the Rebbe. He came to meet the Rebbe. So the student said, you know, it's not so easy to just see the Rebbe. You need an appointment. It could take uh, months to get an appointment. But, you know, in a half hour, he'll be coming out to pray the afternoon service. You could see him during the service. So sure enough, he waits. And the time for Mincha service comes and the Rebbe leaves his office and starts walking into the synagogue <coughs> to pray the afternoon prayers. And before anyone could do anything or say anything, Abe Sachs jumps out of line, out of the uh, where everyone was standing, and he comes right in front of the Rebbe and he says, Rebbe, my name is Abe Sachs and I'm the coach for the Harlem Globetrotters. And the Rebbe looks at him with a big smile and says, that's great because I could use a coach. And ever since then, he established a very warm, close relationship with the Rebbe. And you can look back at the, many of the videos of the 80s uh, at the Fabringans, you'll see thousands of people, a sea of black, Hasidim, singing by the melodies between the teachings. And then you see Abe Sachs would stand up in the middle of the crowd. Sometimes he would even get up on the bench and he would pump his fist like a coach cheering on a team. And the Rebbe would wave back to him and the Hasidim would go into a frenzy. And he became a fixture in 770 Eastern Parkway. And there are many beautiful stories of his relationship, his very close relationship with the Rebbe. Just a good, simple Jew. He wasn't a Hasid, he wasn't very learned, but his soul was on fire and he loved the passion and the warmth of the Fabringans and the beautiful, uh, grand, Lo gestures of the Rebbe's uh, compassion and love and love for Yiddishkeit and the Jewish people and he connected very deeply. And so our Rebbe took us to see the Hong Globe Trotters because we felt a connection with the coach, Abe Sachs, at the time. But I want to focus on the answer of the Rebbe. You know, there are two words. One word is tolerance. The other word is <coughs> interdependence. Tolerance means, you know, you're different than me, you're not like me, you don't really fit in here, but you know what, I'm a nice person, I'm compassionate, I'm sensitive, I'm respectful, I'll tolerate you, I'll put up with you. I don't really appreciate you being here, but I'll tolerate you. Interdependence is just the opposite. Interdependence means that I don't tolerate you because you're different, that's why precisely uh, why I need you, because we don't have anyone else like you. You're unique, you're special. Because you're different than me, you can add something to my life, to, the, to us, that we don't have. So we welcome you with open arms because we recognize your importance and your value. And that is what we are lacking today in America. Today we talk about tolerance a lot. <coughs> Accepting people, tolerating people, respecting everyone. But it's much deeper than that. What the Rebbe was saying to Abe Sachs was, I'm not just going to put up with you because you're eccentric and you're different and you don't really fit in here. On the contrary, I need a coach. We don't have any coaches at 770 Eastern Parkway. This is great that you showed up today because now we finally have a coach. And no one would have ever imagined that we needed a coach. You know, before Abe Sachs came to 770, no one would say, you know what, 770 is missing. In the middle of the Fabringa, we need a guy in a white hat and a white suit to stand up there and go like this with his hands, to wave everyone on, to sing more. 
But now that we got the coach at 770, something no one could have predicted or expected, he transformed the spirit and the vibe in the room when he pumped his fist and the Rebbe pumped back at him and the whole crowd cheered along and sang with more fervor and joy. And that's the message of how to look at another person, how to look at another Jew. Recognize that every Jew is so vital. You know, in this week's Torah portion, it begins by saying, Atem nitzavim hayom, you are standing today before Almighty God. All of the Jewish people together, in unity. And it starts from Rashechem, Shiftechem, your heads, your tribe leaders, your elders, your officers. And it goes all the way down the list until the wood choppers and the water carriers. <clears throat> and there are 10 different categories listed, from the leaders of the community, the elders, the officers, the heads of the tribes, all the way to the simple wood chopper and water ca- carriers. And Moshe Benin says, you're all here together, entering into the covenant with God. And the rabbis say, this is the last Shabbat before Rosh Hashanah, and it's Moshe Rabbeinu's message to us, that you will stand today, they, today refers to the day of judgment, Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur, and you'll be meritorious in your judgment in the merit of your unity, Kulchem, when you stand together. On all of our high holiday prayers, we never ask in the singular. We always say, bless us, grant us, inscribe us. We come as a group, as a unified group. And it doesn't matter if you're at the head or the bottom. It doesn't matter if you're the head or you're the toe. We're one organism. Just like the head can't go anywhere without the foot. Every Jew, every person has to realize, no matter where you are in the totem pole of life, we are all one organism. We are all interdependent. One of the favorite experiences I have sometimes as a rabbi is when we're in shul and we're struggling to find a minion. And it's getting late, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, and everyone's looking around. Who oh, is there a minion? We call this guy, we call that guy, and finally up to eight and up to nine. And suddenly we hear the door opening, and the tenth man walks in, and all nine people in the shul go, How oh, good to see you! And this guy looks like, What did I do? I just showed up. But everyone gives him this warm, warm welcome. It makes him feel like he's so integral, because he is so integral, because without the 10th man, you have no minion. And that's the way we have to look at every person. Every person completes all the rest of us. And we're not whole, we're not one until we have that. And that's the message, Jewish unity. Jewish unity is vital for Jewish continuity and Jewish existence. The only reason we've made it so far is because of our unity. And when we come to Rosh Hashanah and we're asked for another good year, we are reminded again, the way to be granted that good year is by showing love and unity for one another. That's the way God will grant us another good year. Just like if you have a friend and you say, I love you, but I don't exactly love all your children. Some of your children I really don't like. It's very hard to maintain a friendship with that person. So too, if we come to God and say, God, I love you, God. Grant me a good year, but I don't love all your children. Some of your children I really don't like then God's not really that interested in having a relationship with us. If you love my children, then you love me. If you don't love all my children, then you don't really love me properly. You know, here in Palm Beach, there's a tree on the lake trail that's 100 years old, and everyone loves walking by it. It's majestic. It has long roots. But there are actually trees in the world that are 3,000, 4,000. There's even a tree that's 4,700 years old. It's called the Misushelach tree, named after Misushelach, who in the book of Genesis lived the longest. But there's a very unique type of a tree. It's a redwood tree. It grows in California. It's called a sequoia tree. And these sequoia trees are literally 4,000 years old. And they grow sometimes 300 feet tall. And they weigh 200 million pounds. Now you would imagine that a tree that's 4,000 years old, it's been around in the time of Abraham, and it grows 300 feet tall, and it weighs 200 million pounds, you would think that it must have very, very long and deep roots to be able to support such a heavy, large tree. But the secret of the sequoia tree, and they grow in California, is that the average roots of a sequoia tree are only approximately 6 to 12 feet deep. The question is, how can a tree that only has roots 6 to 12 feet deep support a tree that's 300 feet above the surface and weighs hundreds of millions of pounds. And the secret of the sequoia tree is that while its roots aren't very deep, they go very, very far. Sometimes they could go an acre out, miles. And not only do the roots go very wide, but they interlock underneath the surface with other sequoia trees. And because all the different roots of all the trees are interlocking with one another, even though they're not very deep, 
they have a tremendous strength to weather all the storms, all the whatever uh, tsunamis, hurricanes, earthquakes, no matter what comes, this tree has survived 4,000 years. And that's the secret of the Jewish people. The Jewish people have not only very deep roots, roots that go back to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Sarah, Rebecca, Rachel, and Leah, thousands of years, but our roots are very wide, and they reach out across the globe, and our roots interlock and interconnect with every other Jew around the world. And it's that fortitude and strength that has allowed us to continue to exist as a nation for all of these years, for 4,000 years, just like the sequoia tree. And as we approach Rosh Hashanah and we get the last blessing from Moses on this Shabbat before we enter the new year on the following Shabbat, Moshe says, remember, your strength and the source of all your blessings is when you all stand together as one from the heads and the leaders all the way down to the woodchoppers and the water carriers, knowing that before God, you are all his children and you are all one. And this is a message that we as Jews must share with the world, especially this year, as we see so much friction and so much conflict and so much fragmentation in America. We have to teach the world that what we need is not tolerance. What we need is integrity, because the word integrity is integrate. We need to all be integrated, one nation, one organism, one people, and realize that if someone's different than you, that's not a reason to tolerate them. That's the reason precisely why you need them and you must embrace them, because they bring a view, they bring an opinion, they bring a perspective, they bring an attitude that you don't have and you can't experience without their help. With this mindset, we as a Jewish nation will be blessed for a good new year, and America will begin healing and become the united, emphasis on united, states of America, where brother and sister will love one another, and then God will shower our country with great blessings.